Welcome to another episode of South Center's Spotlight on Businesses, in which we speak with two co-founders who run a uh, dance program, Final Form Fusion. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome to another episode of South Center's Spotlight on Businesses, in which today we're going to be talking with two co-founders of Final Form Fusion, which is a dance program in Midwest uh, United States, and they are located in Southern Ohio. Let me introduce both Vinka and Alia, who are going to talk about their business and tell us a little bit about what they do. And we'll, we'll start with Vinka. Vinka is uh, her stage name, in which she is Arian Moore, who has been doing uh, different dance routines. So Vinka, tell us about yourself. Hi, <laughs> my name is Vinka, um, stage name, real name is Arianne Moore. Um, I have been performing um, and at dances since 2009, learning since 2005. And we have started this troupe uh, the past couple of years to bring this dance to different conventions around the area. Well, thank you, Vinka. And Alia? Hi, um, my name is Alia, and my um, actual name is Emily Millison. I have been doing Manette dance since about 2007, um, just personally, and then I started performing in about 2014. Now you do this on, on stage on a professional basis. Just what is Final Form Fusion? So we are a cosplay Manette dance troupe who perform mostly at anime conventions, but we also do other events. Uh, and we produce big theatrical uh, cosplay shows themed around whatever event we're doing. And I, I see that uh, you have various different cover-ups uh, <laughs> because the costumes underneath are those things that uh, you wear while on stage. Yes. Um, we cover up and we're not on stage to both not detract from who's performing, but also just to, you know, keep it a surprise. And do you make these costumes? Most of them, yes, <laughs> were handcrafted. Uh, that is kind of a cultural thing in the cosplay community to try to do everything yourself or most things yourself. Um, sometimes we do buy props or pieces of costumes, but most of our stuff is handmade. Both of you have uh, different kinds of hair pieces. Yes, uh, we have lots of different um, wigs and hair accessories. A big thing that you can do to really accentuate a costume and really set one apart is what you do with your hair and different colors and you know, different styles can really make a costume, take it to that next level that you really want it to have. Why, why did you start Final Form Fusion? We started Final Form Fusion because most of us had been involved with other um, Manat troops or dances or had been taking lessons for a while. And we really wanted to expand into different um, mediums and cultures through music and costume that isn't traditional in Manat dance. And we wanted to really bring the Manat dance style and the theatrics to something that we also loved through um, the different conventions and fantasy and horror and all of those other um, genres that we love that you don't see a lot of in traditional Manat culture. Now, do you make up these dances or are these dances predetermined? So something interesting about these styles of dances is that improv is a huge part of the dance. Um, very rarely, especially if we're doing a solo piece, is anything fully choreographed. Um, even when we do the same, if we do the same song at several shows, it's almost always a unique performance because we're improv the whole thing. Now, group dances are a little bit different because obviously if you have a group, you or a duo or something like that, you need to choreograph a bit. But there are actually some dance styles that do group improvisation and they cue each other through things like hand motions and things like that, head tilts or whatever. Are there a number of you that dance or is it just one or two at a time? 
generally lately we have been doing mostly solos because our troop mates are very spread apart. We're several states uh, and hours away from each other. So it's hard to group practice. Um, but we are actually setting a goal for our next performance season to, to do more group pieces and duos and trios. Because of the COVID-19, uh, because we've had to uh, stay at home more, I would imagine that uh, it's very difficult to get together and, and practice different routines. Yeah, difficult, if not impossible. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. That has been a real challenge through, co well, because of that, most of our venues and places we would have been dancing anyway clearly have not been doing that. Anything in the arts has been hit really hard with everything that's been going on for the last year. So we're trying to um, look towards the future and make goals and plans to uh, really come back strong when we're able to be um, on stage again. Oh, very good, very good. Manette dances, why that style? Well, it's a blend. Most of us, I don't think have been trained in just one style. Uh, like I have been, personally, I've been trained in Egyptian. Um, I have a very small amount of like Mediterranean styles uh, from one teacher who also mostly taught me Egyptian. Uh, but we've also been doing some more like American fusion types of uh, dance as well. So the, the term Manat tends to cover generally all of the different styles because there isn't just one style. There isn't just one dance. This is a now a global thing that originated from these multiple places in the world. Belly dancing. Is that a good term? Yeah, so belly dance, the term belly dance is, um, I guess, falling out of acceptance <laughs> the past few years because it is not, it is it rooted. It oversimplifies. Yes. It oversimplifies. And it lumps a bunch of things together that are very different. And so moving into the Manat kind of highlights that it is a bunch of different cultures and a bunch of different people and peoples um, that are involved in them. And they all have distinct things. And fusion is when you take some things from all of those distinct different um, styles and put them together. So fusion no, is sense. another really good term because it, it implies that you are, it's not one thing, it's, it's lots of things put together. Right. Hmm. As far as the dance, dance that we perform, um, I think the biggest thing that we really want people to understand is that our dance does not come from us, it does not come from America. It, this, these are pieces from other cultures that have existed for, you know, hundreds, thousands of years, these dances are, some of them, you know, folkloric or whether it's, you know, an onstage dance, they belong to these cultures. And that if, if we are performing on stage, we are trying to be as respectful as possible. And if we're not, if we can't be, we don't do it. <laughs> you know? um, and the same thing goes for, any kind of teaching we do, we try to always inform our students, even at our beginner workshops, you know, you know, this comes from this place or this is from this place, or, you know, this is a new move invented in whatever, you know, the education is a huge part of what we try to do both on stage and off stage and backstage with ourselves. And I think in addition to that, we also want to, while highlighting all of that, uh, make it accessible and, and fun. Um, for both us to perform and also for the people we're performing for and anyone who would come and learn from us. So we want it to be um, something that is approachable, but we also want to be respectful to where it came from. I want to thank both of you for talking about Final Form Fusion 